Hello and happy Sabbath. We are so glad that you decided to join us today. Today we will be studying lesson seven, the unified body of Christ. Um, before we do, we wanted to sh share a little bit. We have a testimony and then some prayer requests. So um, Naomi, did you have a testimony you'd like to share with us? Yes. Um, a testimony that I have is that um, I think it was like a week ago, um, I lost my um, debit card. And I know, like, I realized on Wednesday, and when I thought about it, it was like, okay, where was the last time I used it? And it, it was Sunday that the last time I used it, and I hadn't had to use it until Wednesday. And then it was very like, it was like just growing the panic because I'm like, how did I not know? It's been so long. How, it could have been anywhere. Someone could have gotten it. So many things on my mind, right? And I realized at like 7.30 in the morning and um then when I remembered the last store, I was like, okay, let me look up when it opens. Well, it didn't open till 12 p.m. And I had to do work and all the things that, you know, I normally have to do. And I immediately was like, how am I going to focus until 12? <laughs> how am I going to focus on work and just being productive and not let that like be my focus? And um thankfully um a sister from the church was like look up how you can somehow lock your phone or some or not phone card mm -hmm. how you can lock it or something and thankfully chase has a function on their app where you can lock the the card but not cancel it all together so you can just unlock it when you find your card again so I had that, but I was still worried and I was still thinking all the things. So I said a prayer and I asked God, please help me to focus on work, on the things that I have to do, because I can't control anything else about this situation. There's nothing else I can do right now. I have to be at work. I have to focus. And I have to wait till 12 because that was the last place. So um, the, the praise and the testimony is that I was fully focused and engulfed in work that I forgot that I even lost my card in general. Wow. It was 11.45 and I was like, oh, yeah, I have to call that booth at 12. Oh, yeah, that, that is going on. Like, it completely left my mind that I even lost my card, that I was doing this whole thing. And I praise God for that. I praise God that he was able to help me be present and focused on work in when I had to be focused. Because it's really hard sometimes to not let your mind distract you and take you to all those different thoughts and control mm -hmm. and focus on God, focus on the moment that you need to focus on. So I praise God that he really answered that prayer quickly as well, because <laughs> I started work at like eight. So this is like 30 minutes of like trying to calm myself down and like not overthink it. So that was, that was my testimony. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. And I, I love that the testimony is that the Lord gave you that, that peace, not just that he provided the card, but he gave you that peace because, you know, he, he wants to, to bless you with, you know, for example, giving you your card, but really the greater blessing is the peace that he wants to give you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So awesome. he still would have provided that card had you been anxious all of that time too, but, but the gift was that peace. So thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Are there any other praises or prayer requests that you would like to share with us today? Yeah, I, I will say thank you to God for um, 
preservation of relationships. Um, my husband and I celebrated a really significant milestone for our anniversary. And so we are thankful. And just like Naomi, it's because of prayer. Um, relationships are not easy, no matter what kind they are. And when you're able to um, maintain relationships where you remain friends and you can have fun in your marriage, it's a testament to God just honoring his word because of the fact that you trust him to do just that. So that has been great. We um, had traveled in um, over the past couple of weeks. I've been gone also. And so I thank him for traveling mercies because we take it for granted. Um, things when we're on the road, we, we <laughs> were in a rental car and it's one of the newer model rental cars. And um, someone decided to change lanes on the, on our right-hand side like into the back of our car because it's one of those newer rental um newer model cars the car basically accelerated on its own to get us out of the way the other car turning into us um and i thank god for that because i don't think my responses my reflexes would have been as quick as what the car did in the situation so I used to complain and say, oh, they just break on their own and they keep you from doing stuff. Well, in this situation, I guess the car decided that the distance between us and the car in front of us was better than having the car turn into the side of us and the car did it on its own. So I'm thankful for that too. Mm. Praise, Praise God. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I feel like I've been blessed this week. Um, I, I got to visit with some friends earlier this week and it was a blessing to talk with them um they shared with me some of their situation and things that they're going on in their life and it's not in an area that i have a lot of experience or wisdom in so i prayed and i was like i don't know how to advise in in this area but i praise god because that same evening we had dinner with some friends and um, I didn't bring up the topic, but um, our friends actually, that's their, their profession is that particular area. And they were sharing that same type of situation. And um, I feel like the Lord, the Lord helped to use them so that I would be able to better know what to say to my friends. So that was a blessing to see that this week as well. Mm -hmm. Are there any prayer requests that you would like to bring before the Lord today? Um, continued prayer for my mom and just the journey that she's on. Yes. We have a friend in Arizona and um, the mother is the sole breadwinner in the home and she recently lost her job so i want to pray for them and their household they might have peace and that the lord might guide in their home i mean i was um pray for our children um, young adults because um things get really hectic and as parents we try to for those of us who are parents we try to be there as much as we can so i know god is the ultimate parent and his example is what we seek so just praying for children yes yes the lord knows and he cares so if there's no others i'm gonna ask janet if you'd be willing to bring these things to the lord in prayer absolutely shall we bow our heads our kind Heavenly Father, what an awesome example you are of what it means to care in all the situations that we encounter. And so we thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity where we get to share the wonderful good news that is in your word that you set aside for us at this time. Help us there, Lord, through Holy Spirit to bring enlightenment and allow others who may hear this recording to gain knowledge and understanding and insight, but most importantly, ability to have a relationship with you. Lord, we thank you for 
being able to intercede on others' behalf. And so we pray for um, Naomi's mom and the journey that she's on and just ask that you will give wisdom and insight. We also pray for friends whose mom has lost their job. It's hard when you have a caregiver or a person who's a primary breadwinner and not be able to provide because it brings so much stress. So we ask for peace in that situation. And then also for our children and the children of our church and children of this world, we just pray, Lord, that you would continue to be the guardian and send angels to protect and to instruct so that wisdom is given in each situation. And Lord, as we go into this lesson, guide our hearts and our minds also. And all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. So we're continuing on in our study of the book of Ephesians. We are in chapter four. And today we'll look at verses one through 16. Um, I was noticing as we looked um, at the lesson that there were some differences in translations, I think a little bit more than usual. So um, today I have with me the English standard version. Um, and I'm not sure what translations you have in front of you, but maybe if we could have at least two translations that are read. Um, and we'll so start I by have, looking. I have Go the ahead. international version. Hmm? Okay. I have the new international version. Uh, I have new King James. Okay. So maybe if I could have you both read um, Ephesians chapter four, verses one through six. And Naomi, if you want to do new King James first. There. Okay, no problem. Ah, yay. Chapter four, verses one through six. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Mm. Thank you. And if you want to read those same six verses for us, Janet. Sure, and I'll be reading from the New International Version. And it says, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Hmm. All right. So were there any particular areas that stood out to you that were different, one translation to another? It's hard, I know, when you're not looking at it go ahead I was just gonna say when um Janet was reading the like lowliness and gentleness and long suffering and bearing with another in love um I can't remember which one was different specifically but that was um something that st stood out to me which her version says different or just like different words meaning the similar thing but different words I think I heard lowliness and then I heard humility both yeah mine said humility mm. so said, when, sorry, my son mine said humble and gentle be patient mm. so would you say there's a significant difference between humility and lowliness or what do those two words mean Hmm. 
I think because loneliness is a word that we don't use a lot, it's hard to relate to its meaning. Mm -hmm. Um, Humility we get because at times we feel humiliated. So it's not even probably in the context that the Bible intended when it talks about humility. So looking at the use of the words, you would have to, well, I personally would have to go back and say, well, what does it really mean to, to have humility? And then in the dictionary definition of it, it is someone who probably allows others to go before themselves versus what we see as um, being humiliated, even though it comes from the word, it's not the same thing. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I think in my mind, at least lowliness has a negative connotation. You know, you don't necessarily want to be lowly. Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas humility, it does come from, you know, the similar, the same root word as um, humiliate. But I think, I think deep down, we all, we've heard, oh, yeah, well, it's not good to not be humble. We know that it, it, I think it comes with like a more positive feeling. And, you know, I like the way that the lesson brought out the fact that it's not necessarily that that you think others are better than you yourself, but that you put them above you. So if, um, so you're willing to sacrifice for them or Mm -hmm. give up something for them. Um, I was actually reading this with my children. And of course they asked me, what is, what is humility? And I said, sometimes it means that when you only have one of something that you let somebody else have it Mm -hmm. Um, because they deserve it or because they're better than you, but just by putting them first. Mm -hmm. Uh, there in verse one, it says uh, here in my translation, it says, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. How would you say that we should walk to make us worthy mm. of the calling? I know in the lesson, one of the things that stood out for me was that we had to have certain virtues that makes, not makes, that presents us as different from Mm. that of people who are not believers in Christ. Mm -hmm. So being able to put on the same virtues that we talked about of humility and um, gentleness and being supportive of others, as you said, to put them before ourselves are just the characteristics in that area. And you know, go ahead, go ahead, Naomi. I was going to say that is like reflected in our like everyday practices of just how we interact with people and how we um, just choose to live our lives like Janet is saying using these humility gentleness patience it's not seen in the world as much it's not something that the world is really ready to say be humble put others before you it's more saying, look out for yourself because no one else is going to look out for you. And that's really difficult to sometimes go against, but that's where God comes in. That's We're trusting that God is looking out for us. We're trusting that God is attending our needs and and so that we're filled in our relationship with God, we can give and be humble and be servants to other people because we're filled by our relationship with God to be able to give to those to others. 
Yes. Yes, you're right. It is not, it's not the same thing the world is preaching for sure. Mm -hmm. um, in verse three, it says, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Would you say that's something that you see happening in the church today? Eager to maintain the unity. So that depends on the church. Because mm. if you're talking about the church at large as Christians, some people or some denominations are working towards a unity. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about um, within a denomination, uh, say ours, the Seventh-day Adventist faith, it probably depends on where you're located. Hmm. But I know that within the conference, with the sharing that they, when they pass on what are the, um, the, the mission outlooks of the church, what is the focus of the church, there is a desire to be unified in our approaches. Um, each one reach one, or even with um, the focus on getting back to the basics of the Bible so that it's a sharing of the faith because of the fact of you have a relationship with God. So it depends. Okay. Yeah, you know, um, I've seen, I've seen, groups that were unified and really work together to be unified. And I've seen groups that are not as well. So, um, but I like the way that in verses four and five, it really brings together the, the reason we have to be unified because even in our small church, we are not, we would not even all vote for the same president, mm -hmm. much less, make the same decisions as far as the way that we raise our children or how we run our household. And yet here he calls us to be unified. And what are we to be unified in? One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, the Father of all. Yes. And he's the reason why we come together from different ages and different backgrounds and different skills and we work together and i think if we continue on we will see what we are to be doing so let's go ahead and read the next section let's go ahead and read um, verses 7 through 10. Um, but to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this he as ascended, in quotes, what does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And Janet, if you want to read that also in the NIV for us. And that's seven through ten. ten. Mm -hmm. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. That is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean? Except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Mm -hmm. And did you did you catch any main differences there in the translations? There was one or two particular words that 
the lesson mentioned, but what stands out to you that's different between the translations? I think I missed this one. I'm sorry, what? I think I missed this one. I didn't. Oh, no, the one, one difference that I saw is when it says he led captives in his train. So on verse um, eight for me, Naomi, what does yours say? Um, he led captivity captive. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that I noticed when you were reading. I was like, mine said captives in his train. And he gave gifts to men. Mm, and he gave gifts to men. Yeah. But it's different. Captivity captive and led captive in his train. Interesting. You know, I thought that was interesting. And I looked up the words in the original Greek and the words are very similar. And the word that they use to describe one another, like the word captivity, the, the word it's trans, the word captive, it's translated as captivity, but they're two separate words, but they have like a different ending, but you know, the root is very similar. Um, so I thought that was interesting. I don't know if that gave me an aha moment where I'm like, oh, that's what they meant. But they're words that not, are not used often. I think there's one other place where each the captivity and captive are used in the Bible, but not in a similar way. Yeah. Um, I like but, how the New Living Translation in the lesson says he led a crowd of captives. Yes, I was just going to say the same thing. <laughs> Go ahead with your thought. Yeah. Well, no, I, I, I was going to point that out also, but I liked hearing the new international versions because it says he led captives in his train. It's like Jesus is ascending from earth to heaven and there is a trail mm. behind him of what he's bringing to heaven. And the picture, the word picture that created for me was like, wow, um, it wasn't just about him. Look at what he's bringing along with him. But yet at the same time, he's giving out gifts. So it's like, I am, I am, I'm taken, but I'm also given. That was the mm. word picture that stood out for me. You know, and it, it brought also um, a verse from Psalms, Psalms chapter 68, verse 18. And I'm going to read from the what did I say this was? This is the English standard version. And here it says in Psalm 68, 18, it says, you ascended on high, leading a host of captives in your train and receiving gifts among men, mm -hmm. even among the rebellious, that the Lord God may dwell there. So it's kind of cool to see the way that here in Ephesians, he's repeating something. He's quoting something from back in the Psalms as well. And mine uses the same terminology. Actually, I have to, let me check on that. Because I think that my translation did not use the word train earlier, but in Ephesians. But here in um, wow. Psalms, it did. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, mine um, says captivity captive in Psalms and in Ephesians. Mm -hmm. Yes, mine says, um, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. But it's interesting, they use that, that same captivity train language in Psalms. Okay. All right. Go ahead. I like in the lesson the word picture that it creates here where it says in the second part that um how it portrays the Lord as a conquering general who, having conquered his enemies, ascends the hill on which his capital city is built with the captives of battle in his train. Mm -hmm. And then he receives tributes from his conquered foes. It's having um that word picture of a battle that was fought and won and here it is the generals returning home with the i wouldn't say spoils but it is the tributes of war mm -hmm. the picture that it creates there just ties the ephesians um ephesians scripture together nicely 
Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right, let's go on to verses 11 through 14. Okay. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Hmm. And in the and NIV it says, it was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Mm. Mm. All right, quite a bit in there. If we look at 11 and 12, it's talking specifically about gifts and skills that, that God gives for the purpose of unity. Um, would you say there are any words in there that were different, that you had differences in your translations that you think were significant? Yeah. Um... I thought it was interesting that um, in, are we focusing only on 11 though? Are we going through all of them? 11 and 12, I think to start with. Okay, um, 12, I saw that ministry was replaced with serving. Hmm. In Janet's version, I, I know it's not Janet's version specifically, but <laughs> the one that she's reading from, it, it says work of servanthood or servant something along those lines. Work of service. Service. Mm -hmm. it's, and mine like, says work of ministry. Yeah. I like that distinction because sometimes I think we want to put ministry for the, for the professionals, right? For the mm -hmm. pastors. Yeah. And yet service is something that is for all of us yes mm -hmm. yeah that's true mm -hmm. i, I noticed in, did ahead. your version did your version also say pastors and teachers as one of the gifts yes it does okay yeah but it says shepherds and teachers oh yeah, my, i said evangelists before that and then pastors and teachers Mm -hmm. mindset evangelists too okay. i think we were really on the same page with the names of those okay. but yours said shepherds Lindsay. yes mine says the evangelists the shepherds and teachers mm. That's me. well you know when we think about how the bible uses the word picture for shepherd it's the responsibility of the person who is the shepherd to lead the flock, to yeah. guide them, to protect them. So I can see how it would be used in the version that she, Lindsay is sharing. Yeah, instead of pastor. Because I think we, today we think of our pastors being all responsible for doing all the work of the church. Mm -hmm. um, but yet when you think of shepherd, you think of shepherd more someone who's caring for the flock in the church mm. versus doing work. That's the picture that comes to my mind. 
Hmm. And nowadays we have we have people that go by the title of, of evangelist and pastor and teacher. Um, do, would you say we have any equivalents to apostles or prophets today? So again, it, it goes to denominations because I have family members who attend um, different denominations and they have in their church, they call people apostles and they call people prophets. Um, within the Adventist faith, I that those are words that aren't used to describe ministries of service in our, in, in our faith, but in other faiths, I have seen it used. Yeah, I had a friend in college and she was Muslim and they had prophets in her, in her church. Um, or when she would go to prayer or to meeting, they had um, people by the title of prophets. So the purpose of all of these leaders is in verse 12 to equip the saints for the work of ministry. Mm -hmm. So I guess regardless of what the title is, the purpose is the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it says in verse, did you want to say something, Janet? I was going to say, it depends on where you're going with, with your next point. I was going to say there was a point in the lesson where it says that we should be careful in identifying shepherds or pastors, teachers and evangelists, since we think of these positions in our own context and in our own time and what that really means. And since we talked about the different denominations use of the word it is interesting that these gifts that were given from god to the body of christ um how they have been i don't want to say changed but um the definitions how they've been applied within the body of christ but as you said the ultimate use of the gift is for um works of service or for ministering to build up the body of Christ. So if we are using the terms and applying them to individuals, but not in a context that they are working towards building up the body of Christ, then we really need to be careful. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I've, and I've noticed that even um, sometimes when the Bible refers to deacons or elders, the way that we would use those words would be more likely, you know, elders and pastors. And yet the purpose at the end is, is to be um, training and bringing others into a knowledge of him. Now, here they talk about maturity, right? Mm. Mine says mature manhood. Um mm. When, when or how would we identify um, one that's reached this point of maturity? <laughs> I mean, it, it, it wasn't in the lesson. Janet's probably looking here saying, this is not a question at the <laughs> lesson. <laughs> that's not what I was thinking. What I was thinking is, I don't even feel like I'm even mature in my faith. So for you asking that question, I'm just going, wow. That's that's really something to ponder. And I think it is something good to consider. And honestly, here as Christians, all with different gifts, and we're working here in the church, and it says we're to continue to work towards unity. That's what it says at the end of verse 12 and says until we attain to the unity of the faith mm. and of the knowledge of the son of god to mature manhood you know when i look at that i think that basically means yeah just keep working on it because i feel like the longer i follow christ the more i feel like yeah i'm not there yet mm. you know and I think that when we talk about ma maturity is not simply, I mean, there is a meaning coming of age, but also it's, it's, um, 
completeness, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's reached its full measure, completeness. And I think some of that is not going to happen until the Lord comes, right? Mm -hmm. And he makes all things well, and he makes all things perfect. Um, so it's something that we can, should continue to grow and to mature in. Um, but then we are not supposed to just wait until that day either. Um, in verse 14, it says, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Um, so for today, what does that tell us that we should or should not be doing? Hmm. I think my... Go ahead, Go ahead Naomi. Um what comes to my mind with that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by trickery of men and cunning craftiness and craftiness of deceitful plotting. Um, I think of the testimony that I shared in that I could have been tossed and turned and brought into like distraction from my like purpose of work in that moment I know that this is talking about focusing on God and focusing on um his leading and guiding um I kind of equate it to that of it could have distracted me from my work and it could have just not been very productive for me if I let me losing my card really take over my thoughts take over the worry and so on and so forth um and wasted like that time possibly however I was able to pray and keep my focus on God taking control of that situation and giving me peace and letting his will be done in that sense um so and, and i'm that's kind of what i think about is not letting things just overtake us in that way but staying focused on god's leading and guiding thank you and what i was going to share was i think about how we study the scripture and how we learn things. And there are times when I have read a passage and then come back months, weeks, years later and read the same passage and went, huh, I don't remember seeing that there before. Mm -hmm. So when I hear us talk about maturing and being mature, as we continue to read and study and enlightenment from the Holy Spirit is received, that aids our maturity. Mm -hmm. And then as we grow, the way that I see the text here for um, verse um, 13 into 14, is that we then take the knowledge that we have gained because we have learned and then we've applied it mm -hmm. and we share it with the body of Christ. So that as we have grown in our understanding based on the wisdom imparted by the Holy Spirit, we then give it to the body of Christ because ultimately the gifts that we were given is to build up the body. And if the gift of teaching becomes something that we have, and as we are learning, do we then impart it to others? The benefit then is to God's glory. So that's the way I'm understanding the maturity aspect of this. You know, as you were reading that, it, it came to my mind also that the purpose of these gifts is to help the body to be formed, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think sometimes it's easy for us to just say, I'm going to study for myself. I'm going to sit at home where it's more relaxing and I'm comfortable and I can just you know, feast on God's word and my religion, you know, I, I don't need church. 
time and all the drama that there is in church Mm -hmm. for me to have a good relationship with God. But this is really very specific to the experience that God wants his people to have together, Mm -hmm. building one another up. Mm -hmm. Um, There's no purpose in humbleness or gentleness or humility if there is no one to exhibit that behavior towards. So, um, and as you're sharing that, Lindsay, I get I get word pictures. Words just form pictures in my mind. But as you talked about just studying by ourselves, I saw somebody just gorging. It's like they're sitting there just filling themselves up, filling themselves up to the point where they're so full that they feel sick and they're like, oh my gosh, it's too much. Mm-hmm. Whereas when you sit down to dinner with a lot of people and there's a whole variety in front of you and you're just eating and sharing, what an awesome experience that becomes for everyone who's involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you imagine at Thanksgiving dinner if when they pass the plates around, they just don't pass you? They just You just keep them... <laughs> <laughs> yourself till you finish them that wouldn't be that wouldn't be a pleasant thanksgiving for you or anyone else oh. mm-hmm. all right so it, i am going to take a question from the lesson at the end of thursday it says what are some of the winds of doctrine blowing through our church today and how can we stand firm against them mm, i think how i mentioned earlier how the world and the winds, I guess you could say, is like looking out for yourself, relying on yourself, um, creating yourself, like just a, a really heavy focus on self mm-hmm. coming through. Watch out for number one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because no one else is going to, or it just brings a lot of doubt and it brings a lot of fear as well, and a lot of anxiety and worry in that sense. So that's like one of them that's um, coming through or threatening to come through. Yes. I also think about the doctrine of prosperity how that has become something that people like to tout as that is something God wants. God does not want us to be poor. He wants us all to be rich. Mm. He wants us to seek um, the blessings that he pours out to us financially and that we are to speak it into our lives and into existence. Don't get me wrong. I really believe that as you speak things, your mind hears it and you respond in a manner to where you move in directions that can become blessings. Mm -hmm. I believe in that 100% wholeheartedly. I also believe that God blesses us so that we can bless others. And that within the body of Christ, there are some people who based on the principles that they have applied and things that they have done over the years, whether it's through opportunities or experience, they become wealthier than others. But the doctrine of prosperity where it is now being taught to benefit self, as Naomi was mentioning, is one that I think we should be um, aware of when you're asking about um, the winds of doctrines that's blowing through churches today. Because when we look at... um, verse 15, where it says, we will, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head that is Christ. If the intent of this, the gifting is for us to grow up in Christ, does becoming rich then become something that we need to work towards? Or is it to become full of Christ, full of God and the spirit? So that's Mm -hmm. another doctrine that came to mind for me. Mm -hmm. Good thought. Thank you. Let's go ahead and take a look at our last two verses that we have. They're good ones. Um, So if someone could read uh, verses 15 and 16. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things 
into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Hmm. And the NIV says, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every support and ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Mm. Mm. All right. So as we're looking at this, what then it adds another aspect to the maturity or the growing up that we had been talking about earlier. What, what would you add to um, what we've already been discussing just about this picture of the body and growing up? Relying on each other in a sense, like we all have a part to play that together comes together for God and for God's work. Yeah, I think if um, in Ephesians, when Paul is describing the body, he does such a great job of creating the word picture that tells us the importance of every thing that comes into being here in the, in the chapter. And so for mine, when it talked about supporting ligaments mm -hmm. and that grows and builds itself up, our ligaments hold the muscles and sinews that attaches them to the bone. So if within the body of Christ, each of us is doing our part, then a person who is a bone in the body depends on that sinew and ligament in order to move where in it's a joining connection to another bone. So none of us can then say to ourselves, hmm, well, this gift that I have is more important than this other person's gift. And so I'm going to go out on my own to do this for God because that's not part of the plan. It says the, 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 it ends where it says each part does its work. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you know, the Bible, they had, they repeated this same picture for us when relating the body of Christ. You know, they, at the beginning of the lesson, they mentioned one of Aesop's fables, you know, the, the stomach having a conversation with the arm or something like that. But um, when we look at first Corinthians, there's another example of, you know, where they're specific about the different body parts. And I really think it's because God wants us to see clearly that one is not above the other and that one without the other is not complete. Mm -hmm. So let me ask, would you say, we've talked about the importance of unity. Would you say unity at all costs or something different? I wouldn't say unity at all costs necessarily because um, that, yeah. But, mm. I wouldn't say it at all costs, as long as it is following God's leading and God is at the center of that unity, that's where it should, I think, be focused. I would say unity costs, mm. because in order for you to have it, you have to work hard. And when you have to work hard at something, there is a cost involved. Mm -hmm. so maybe not the paint color that I picked. 
Mm. You know, as we were talking about the body of Christ, I think if we were to say, who's the head of the, this body? Who's the head? For me, the head is, is God. That's what it says. He God. is the father of all. Yes, he is the head of this of the church. So yep. unity unified in him at all costs. Yes. But there's no point if we make an entire body and we are all united separate from the head. Yes. So um that's where I was going. As we continue to work to build up the body, let us remember that it builds itself up in love and there at the beginning of verse 15 um right there rather speaking the truth in love we are to grow up amen was there anything else that either of you wanted to add to it before we close with prayer one body as it says one faith one baptism one god and father of all Thank you very much. All right, Naomi, if you can pray for us. Mm -hmm. Dear Jesus, thank you for being with us in this time to um, study your word and study your inspired word and um, learn about the body of Christ, learn about our parts and learn about where our focus should be and um thank you thank you for these verses and this um chapter that you've given us i pray that um each person listening and even ourselves can take away something that helps us grow in you today and um also for this coming week lord um i pray that you please continue to help us be humble, gentle, um, also serving to each other as well. And I pray that your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much for joining me in discussion. And for those that are listening, we hope that you were also blessed um, by this discussion and that you're able to leave uh, a comment if you have any, um, any thoughts more to share. We hope that you join us again next week as we look at Lesson 8, Christ-Shaped Lives and Spirit-Inspired Speech. Have a wonderful Sabbath. God bless.